concept of, of tithing. Let's just go back there for a few minutes. The way it's taught in most churches, I mean, if a pastor wants to get the, get the flow of grace or the flow of giving to come into his church, oftentimes they'll start teaching on tithing, and they'll start with Malachi. And Malachi said, you know, God's speaking to Malachi saying, why are you robbing me? And uh, you're under a curse. Uh, you, uh, you never have enough of anything. Your purses have uh, holes in it. And uh, it, uh, everything has dried up. And it's because you're robbing me. And they said, well, how have we robbed you? And he says, Be you know, you've kept back the tithe. And it uh, describes his curse. Well, for me, that's not going to, that kind of teaching isn't, isn't applicable for most of us today because we're under this whole grace flow. If I were to um, uh, incite or inspire uh, a flow of giving in someone, I would take them to Corinthians. I would take them to what Paul taught was uh, the grace of giving. In, in chapter 8, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and 9 is all about giving, but he, he doesn't use the word money. He's talking about money. The context is money, but he's talking about grace. And that was one of the first clues I had that, that this really is about grace, about the flow of grace in our lives. And, and I just thought I'd take a minute to establish that it has to come out of the volition of your own heart. In order for it to really be anything, it has to come out of your want to. So if there's a law that's commanding you to do it, and if you don't do it, you're under a curse. And if you do do it, you're under a blessing. If you subscribe to that, it, it'll change the whole nature of giving. Uh, it's like someone said, um, uh, God told me to go to the uh, mission field for two weeks and, and to, to work with people. I doubt that he did. I doubt that he told you. I doubt that he commanded. Or someone will say, God told me I had to get up and prophesy. And they're shaking, they're trembling, and God's commanding me to say this. I doubt it. I doubt that he's doing that. Or someone else says, God told me I had to pray, and I had to, and, and it's kind of like an anvil is hanging over their head. If they don't do it, uh, it'll fall out of the sky on their heads. I don't see that in Scripture because it's contrary to the flow of grace. It has to come out of your want to. It has to come out of the, the nature of Christ within you. And so let's look at this. Uh, in Second Corinthians, we'll look at a, a few verses here. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. In fact, we're going to go there in a minute, so why don't you go there now? He says, For I bear witness according to their, uh, that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely willing. And so I put in bold type, they were freely willing. It's their own volition. It's them, it's them deciding to give. They were freely willing. In verse 11, it says, uh, uh, and now also complete uh, the doing of it, that there was a, a readiness to desire it so that also there may be a completion uh, of those things. So there's a readiness of desire. Uh, verse 12 says, uh, if there's first a willing mind, and so it has to be something that we have. Uh, chapter 9, verse 2, he says, for I know your willingness. Chapter 9, verse 5, uh, not out of grudging obligation. Chapter 9, verse 7, it says, for, uh, so let each one give as he purposes in his heart. So in order for this flow of giving to go, you have to be part of the process. You have to have a want to. You have to start it. It's like a first step. Your first step is to give, and that opens the pipe. It unplugs the pipe. You give, and next thing you know, it, it, it primes the pipe, and next thing you know, giving starts flowing. And it's not like God saying uh, in a greedy way, boy, if they give, then maybe I'll give to them. It's not that way at all. It's just the way to get the grace flowing. It, maybe that's why Jesus said in Luke 38, uh, uh, 638, he says, give and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Uh, will men put into your bosom uh, for what measure you use, uh, that's the measure that will be given back to you. So we control the measure. We decide the measure. It's kind of like going to Oak Hill Bulk Foods and, and finding one of those scoops, you know, where you're scooping out the bulk food. You choose the size of the measure. God doesn't. And whatever you decide, and you're doing it by faith. Do you have those anymore? At least maybe in the back room. <laughs> but uh, uh, in bulk food stores, sometimes they'd have a scoop chained to the uh, 
chained to the uh, bucket, and you'd scoop out whatever. But you choose the size of the scoop. This whole thing is, is contingent upon you giving. Give, and it shall be given to you. And that's true of anything. That's true prophetically. That's true. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's money or power. Money or, or uh, any other kind of grace. It all works out of the same pipe. One place to see that is in the book of Acts when Peter is walking to uh, the temple. He and John are going to the temple. They're walking through the gate beautiful. There's a man begging there, and he shakes the cup. And Peter says to him, he says, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. And then he reaches down, and he gives away healing. He pulls the man to his feet. Next thing you know, his legs grow out. Well, whether it's giving money or whether it's giving healing, it works out of the same flow. It works out of the, you, you have one set of plumbing. And so however, however it works, it all comes out of the same thing. Peter could have said, I'll give you money if he had it. I'll give you money, and that would have been an extension of grace. Or he says, well, I don't have any money, so what I have, I'll give to you. So this whole thing is really all wrapped up in a neat little bundle that, that money, forgiveness, the gifts of the Spirit, evangelism, all comes out of this flow of giving. This something, something has to start with you, and it gets the, the plumbing primed, and next thing you know, it starts the flow of giving. It's not that God, God already gave. He already started this whole process, but we get plugged up. We get stopped up. And that, that's, what, that's our end of it. We have to unplug the pipe. We have to stop, uh, start the flow again by giving. Oftentimes, uh, when I'm teaching on, on giving or any of that to try to inspire, uh, I, don't use, I don't use threats of, of cursing, but more incite a desire with a promise to get people's want to, to get them willing again, get their desire up, uh, using my own example or, or using stories to help them because it gets the grace of, of giving flowing, which is the key to everything. Mm -hmm.